This is an interesting question. They're uh, talking about some sequence and they want us to figure out the value of the fifth term. They're giving us the values of the first two terms right there in the free info. So I know that sequence starts like this, zero, one, well, that's all I know so far, and I want to know the value of the fifth term. Now, I think a lot of people might accidentally assume that this is a sequence of consecutive integers, just because the first two terms are zero and one. But all the, I mean, the word sequence really just means it's a set of numbers where the order matters. They're, they're ordered numbers. There's a first term, a second term, a third term, as opposed to just a random set of numbers that doesn't have a, an order to it. Uh, so that's all a sequence means. And just because it starts with 0, 1, it doesn't mean that it's going to follow some kind of pattern. There, there doesn't have to be a pattern in a sequence. So we're going to need some statements because just knowing the first two terms, that on its own couldn't possibly be sufficient for us to find the value of the fifth term. So looking at the statements, I think statement two seems a little bit easier to evaluate because it gives us the third term. Uh, so now we know the first three terms are zero, one, two. Again, it's really looking like it's some kind of a uh, special sequence with a pattern to it, but we don't know that. So can we find the value of the fifth term just based on the first three terms? Absolutely not. Uh, so we can go ahead and eliminate B and D because those are the answer choices that claim that statement two is sufficient on its own. So now we're going to look at statement one on its own. And statement one says that the terms in the odd positions, so the first term, the third term, the fifth term, the seventh term, the ninth term, and so on, they're all either zero or two. Uh, so this is actually a pretty good statement because we are trying to find the value of the fifth term and statement one narrows that down very nicely for us. It, it gives us just two possibilities. We know now that it's either zero or two. The problem is we still don't know which of those two options it is. Is it zero or is it two? I don't know, and so this is still not sufficient on its own to answer the question. We should go ahead and eliminate A. So now we're down to just two answer choices, C and E. If we combine these statements, what do we know? Uh, we know the sequence starts like this, 0, 1, 2. And by the way, uh, the first term and the third term really are either 0 or 2. So uh, that's to be expected because the statements are not allowed to lie. So this, uh, this makes sense with statement 1. But then what's the fifth term? I still can't really say whether it would be 0 or 2. And uh, that means that the correct answer here is E. If you found this video useful, go to quantreasoning.com for a lot more where that came from. You should also click that like button and let me know in the comments below what you'd like me to make future videos about. And of course, if you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and do that and click that bell below so you get notified about future videos. See you next time.